Steiner was a turn-of-the-century mystic that was responsible for the anthroposophical movement, biodynamic gardening, and Waldorf education. However, perhaps one of his most prescient teachings was on the figure of Ahriman. The word Ahriman stems from the Persian tradition and represents the shadow aspect of humanity, or the dark side of humanity. In particular, Ahriman represents the part of humanity that can only perceive the material plane. In the Steiner work, the individual is challenged to overcome this influence within themselves by opening their heart to Christ. In Rudolf Steiner's Anthroposophy, Ahriman, through his materializing presence, helps to create an artificial sphere around the earth. In Esoterica, this has been referred to as the Eighth Sphere. The Eighth Sphere works as a kind of catch-all, or magnet for what is artificial, or not in alignment with God and nature. In this way, the Eighth Sphere is similar to the idea of the lower astral plane in the New Age, or perhaps even the idea of hell or purgatory in Christian esoterica. In Anthroposophy, Armon represents the part of the human being that is infatuated with, or at times even trapped, in the material plane. When the harmonic impulse within us is not balanced, we become obsessed with the material level of our existence, and we believe that all inspiration, power, energy, and evolutionary potential begins in the material level of existence. Over time, if this perspective is not balanced, the individual can find it harder and harder to perceive and understand the spiritual planes. Overall, this creates an inversion of reality. Why the Eighth Sphere is a fascinating concept is that it brings our attention to the evolution of our planet in the solar system and also how human beings evolve. The Eighth Sphere is acting not only as a catch-all for soul essences that are out of alignment with God, it is also slowly condensing over time into a planetary sphere in its own right. Thus, the Eighth Sphere becomes a planetary embodiment of all consciousness on the Earth that is regressive. Before it completely materializes into its own separate planet, the Eighth Sphere can be seen as a kind of lower astral stream surrounding the Earth. Of course, there is a higher evolutionary stream as well. In this way, we can observe that the Earth is symbiotically joined and contributing to different cosmic streams. There will come a time in the Earth's development where the Eighth Sphere begins to merge with the Earth. This will of course be an astral and etheric overlapping that will begin to create physical manifestations in the world around us. As this comes to pass, the world will reach a peak in scientific materialism and harmonic attitudes. Humanity will be challenged to see many great evils within society and technology will become a religion and overshadow the human being's natural development. Then, after several centuries, the moon will return to the earth, and with that passage, the eighth sphere will be dragged through the center of the earth into its new realm. As it passes through the earth, the soul essences of those that align with it will be pulled through as well and follow it into this lower realm of development. The transforming of worlds is a process of mitosis. Once a planet reaches the end of its cycle, it splits into two different planetary bodies. One body is of a higher substance and becomes the next planet of incarnation for those of humanity that have passed the initiation 
and align with the organic life wave of the cosmos. The other planetary body is of a lower substance and is the accumulated forces of the degenerative stream. In the Hopi tradition, this dividing of worlds is called the two paths and is illustrated on a petroglyph in northern Arizona called Prophecy Rock. According to Hopi elder Thomas Ban Yakaya, this image depicts the end of the world, or the end of our current planetary cycle. We can see that there is one path that forks into two. One path is going in an upward direction, while the other is beneath it. But then they will advance in scientific things, inventions, but they're going to destroy themselves with what they invented if they're not careful. So now we are right in this period, they said. We are either go all out for this kind of thing and destroy ourselves, or come back, search our spiritual instructions, search ourselves within us, something that should link us together. Because now we know that we are all alive, we are all linked together. As mentioned, in the Hopi tradition, when the earth reaches the end of a cycle, it splits into two streams, or two worlds. One is regressive and defined by the misuse of science and technology, while the other is progressive and defined by turning to the earth and the development of spirituality. This is parallel to the esoteric concept of the splitting of the earth into two different evolutionary streams. In anthroposophy, the devolutionary stream eventually leads to the eighth sphere, while the evolutionary stream leads to a higher expression of the earth called New Jupiter. In the theosophical tradition, we would see this planetary splitting as the planet moving through its life wave, and as a natural process of the planet's evolution through its unique planetary scheme. In the New Age, this concept is also present. The lower Earth is called the 3D Earth, and the higher Earth is called the 5D Earth. These are all simply different ways of expressing the same core esoteric concept. The continuity of this teaching throughout the eras is an example of spiritual science, or esoteric science. Even though the cultures may be different, or different aspects may be highlighted, the same core concept still exists. According to Hopi elder, Elder Thomas Banyakya, the world has been destroyed three times prior to this. So that's the first world they said. Great area of land sunk, thousands of people destroyed, separated. The island here. But only a handful of people came out to the second world. This account is parallel to the Western esoteric science that teaches the destruction of the prior epochs of humanity. These epochs are the Atlantean epoch, the Lemurian epoch, and the Hyperborean epoch. The Atlantean epoch was destroyed by the Great Flood, or the Biblical Flood. The Lemurian epoch was destroyed by intense fires. And the end of our current epoch, which is called the Post-Atlantean Epoch, is marked by an event called the War of All Against All, or intense societal division, greed, and spiritual ignorance. Many indigenous cultures observe a different account of history than the mainstream. They speak about civilizations much older than any mainstream academic journal will acknowledge. South American traditions claim their ancestors came to the continent after a great flood from a mysterious island called Aslan. The Hopi speak about three prior epochs of humanity. One, the last one, is described as the sinking of a large island. The Hopi people were one of the peoples that emerged from the earth after the destruction. This destruction of prior epochs, or civilizations, is also a tenant in various mystery traditions, including the Eastern traditions, theosophy, and anthroposophy. In fact, it's only our modern scientific era that discounts these prior conditions of the Earth. The issue in recognizing these prior epochs 
is likely due to the reality that the density of the Earth shifts over such long periods of time. Human consciousness and the human form shifts as well. This means that someone only recognizing the current material level of existence cannot actually perceive or understand anything beyond it, including past eras of the Earth, or past civilizations of the Earth. This denial of the Earth's oscillation in density makes it impossible for them to actually perceive the deep history of the Earth properly, let alone widen their understanding to include shifts in consciousness that accompany these past epochs. Thus, overall, we get an inaccurate and stunted version of our past from the mainstream. Hopi elder Thomas Banyakaya attributes the destruction of the three prior epochs to the misuse of technology and even worshipping technology as a god. Humans always do something when he get developed to power where he can do many things himself, inventions, writings, and spiritual development. <coughs> they turned it around and started use it against each other. Animal, bird, trees, plant life, and they will not stop. They know it's wrong. They continue to lie and steal and plunder many things, and no one stopped that. So that first word they said, great area of land sunk, thousands of people destroyed, separated, in the island here. But only a handful of people came out to the second word. While mainstream institutions think that our civilization is the first and only advanced society, our own ancestral cultures disagree. Whether it be the Hopi, the Vedas, or the Celts, they all mention that they were offshoots or survivors of prior advanced civilizations. Atlantis was a civilization that actually reached a higher level of technological advancement than we have today, this means that much of the technology that we classify as off-world or alien may actually be technology that was retained from the Atlantean epoch by certain groups. The same goes for megalithic structures. It's not aliens, it's us. It's our technology and architecture from the prior epoch. In the new age, the splitting of the planet into two paths or two separate spheres is called the ascension process. While the descension path is not often discussed or acknowledged, the ascension path is. This path is said to lead to the new earth, or the fifth dimensional earth, or the 5D earth. The high vibrational new earth exists in a different plane of consciousness that is much higher than our current level, and humanity must purify and align themselves with the higher forces to incarnate on the new earth. This is obviously similar to the ascension of Christ in esoteric Christianity, where humanity aligns with the Christ impulse in order to spiritualize their form into a higher plane. In the anthroposophical tradition, the new earth is called New Jupiter, and this is a totally different expression of the earth. It is called New Jupiter because the qualities of Jupiter permeate the Earth as it rises into its new form. This new incarnation of the Earth is a more astral form of the Earth and significantly less dense than our present condition. Our bodies will also be more astral in nature and we will be in the process of spiritualizing our form into even finer and finer conditions. New Jupiter is also New Jerusalem, thus the importance of Jerusalem in religious prophecy and tradition. One of the pitfalls of modern spirituality is the avoidance of any kind of structure or the avoidance of reality. Each one of us chooses what we believe and what we don't, and we can choose to avoid exploring certain topics that threaten our sense of personal security. This recoiling from the more confronting truths of our existence is a result of unresolved fear 
and lack of personal trust in oneself to actually endure the purification and rebirth process that comes with being wrong about one's worldview. When this occurs, the more challenging topics like the eighth sphere and the potential devolution of consciousness are completely avoided and spirituality becomes a practice of escapism rather than genuine development.